Welcome to uh, this week 6 lecture module 6 design of general purpose industrial helical gear reduction unit. This is part 4. We are uh, still continuing with the development of plan and elevation of the gearbox and this is the fourth lecture of this week. Lecture number 30 development of plan and elevation of reduction gear unit part 3 and in this lecture I shall cover the development of plan and elevation of reduction gear unit 3, more details of housing comprising full plan view, full elevation, side view, some important details of the housing. Now, this is again we have uh, in the last lecture we have discussed that why we have taken 1 is to 1 scale and uh, we will accommodate everything inside that we are following the third angle projection for the viewing and uh, this is a typical drawing view and uh, the scale 1 is to 1 we have taken. However, we have changed the bearing to 6205, 6208 and 6209. Then if we look into this view, this is just to show you that how it looks like. Say um, this is that A0 size drawing sheet, we have left top corner, we have put the plan view of the full plan view is shown there and uh, below that following the third angle projections we I have shown the elevation view. All components are not yet put there, but you can uh, this is uh, to uh, we can understand easily what we are going to do next and then by the side of elevation right side we have drawn the side view which is also in third angle projections. This details I will discuss next. Now, this is in this view what I have shown the we have zoomed out that uh, the plan view of the gearbox. Now, if you look here in this plan view. First of all, this is I have already shown this part. That is the input shaft, this is input shaft sorry. this is input shaft and uh, in the input shaft what we have put we have put the cover and oil seal we have put the cover and oil seal which is shown already shown in the previous lecture now if we think of the other side the other side you will find that the cover is there but there is this is completely blind because other side this shaft is not um, extended. This is only input from one side only. So, we need not uh, go for making any hole or oil seal is not required simply we put a cover. This construction of, of the cover is more or less same only at the middle there is no hole as you see there. But importantly while we are estimating the life of the bearing, what we did that the bearing at the far end of the pinion that bearing is locked. So, that it can take the axial load irrespective of direction of rotations. Here we have taken the pinion of right hand pinion, right hand helix pinion. Okay. So, directing uh, depending on the direction of rotations 
either the axial force either it will be in this directions or it will be in this directions. And whatever may be the directions this axial load will be taken by this bearing either it will be pulled or it will be pulled. That is why if you look here that the cover is touching the bearing race here it is touching the bearing race and this bearing race corner is rest on the housing also. So, this outer race cannot move and if we look into the inner race of the bearing that is one side there is a step of the shaft it is resting on that and other side there is a shaft cliff. So, this bearing also cannot move on the shaft. So, therefore, whatever axial load is coming that will be taken by the, this bearing and other side has been kept free. So, that if there is some uh, misalignment in the assembly that will be taken care of as well as if there is some elongation of the shaft or contraction of the shaft due to the heat then this would be taken care of that means that can move that bearing can move axially outward or inward there. Essentially we should keep a gap there if you observe that from the bearing end uh, inner race end and the cover end there is a gap. If you minutely look into this there is about 1 2 millimeters gap shaft elongation will be very small very very small. So, we need not worry about that 1 or 2 millimeter gap is there. However, these two components these two cover will definitely will be of different dimension different feature. So, they are separate component we have to while we are numbering this component part number these two will have separate identity separate part numbers. Now, if we come to the next intermediate shaft in intermediate shaft there is no shaft end it is not that shaft end is going out. So, we can use the cover blind cover both side. Now, if we look into the side which we have where the we have locked the bearing that means this end we have the locking of the bearing with the shaft by a lock nut which is also manufactured by the bearing company this comes with the bearing that is having a special thread. And we have used that locking arrangement. If you look into this, this locking arrangement is there. We could have used the shaft clip also, but this is the better way of locking. Usually, in intermediate shafts or where both gear, pinions, etc., there, there it is better to put that type of locking. Okay, and if it is taper roller bearing if you go for taper roller bearing then it is essential we cannot avoid that ok. Now, if we look into the locking of that side there is also this corner that we have kept a raised portion of the housing. So, that inner race outer uh, outer race can rest on there and on the shaft we have used the step and lock nut and then this cover must touch the outer race if you look into this this part the cover is also touching there and then this for uh, making this drawing uh, so that the cover line cover does not touch the shaft we have raised this portion unlike this say if you compare with this this is simply 
we have put the cover and here we have put the cover slightly projected. Now, question is that in other side whether we can put the same cover. Now, if you look into this, this design is made in such a way the same cover can be put in on also in the other side, right. So, the here we will give only one item number say this is 21. So, here also we can put 21 and number of will be 2. This will at least uh, whatever may be the small, but still inventory will be less for that. We can use the same cover on the other sides. Okay. And as you if you look here the dimensions are maintained in such a way here this gap is there. This gap may be a little more to adjust the wall dimensions, but does not matter. Now, another issue is there that still there is a possibility that oil will leak through this from the side of the bearing through this it can leak like this. So, usually this surfaces a very thin gasket is put that looks that looks like very thin type very thin micron level few microns are there that is if you think of this uh, uh, that uh, polythene packets of transparent packets it is it's something look like, like that or like a transparent sheet simply it is cut and it is put there while it is tight tightened then uh, there will be no leakage of the oil a special seal is made for that also. So, that is put in all cover. So, this is we have completed the cover of intermediate shaft. Then if we come to the output shaft side, then we find that there we have already discussed about this output part and there how the ceiling and cover is put and how we have locked the bearing there that is also far end. So, we have locked that part and other end we have the bearing we have locked with the shaft using the shirt cliff whereas, the co cover is made blind. In any case these two components can be cannot be made same although the shape may be same, but there will be a hole in output side and other side it will be blind. However, here we have taken that means, this will carry separate item number. We have made flat type and if you compare with this of other side it is more or less same, same but size is different of course. So, in that way we complete the cover part. Okay. Now, next uh, other important factors are first of all let me discuss about this dowel pin. So, after the first planning, planning is over by in a planning machine this surface, this surface okay, for both top and bottom then this, this there are through holes are made that is to put the through bolts. If you look into here see one bolt is shown on the elevation. So, these bolts are put like this and for that bolt you need to make a some counter on the both sides. So, that the bolt, uh, bolt can both can be put there with without any I mean it can touch the surface properly. So, but uh, I, I would say that uh, we use the spring um, type washer spring washer there, but still we make this surface there is a special tool like a drill and uh, end mill cutter that is put there and these surface are uh, machined and as you 
look minutely the circle with dotted lines bigger circle with dotted lines that is for there. And here in this drawing we have used this is small gearbox we have used M 5 bolt for tightening and uh, so that outside diameter of that one may be can be made 10 millimeter. So, we can use the book, uh, special tool of 10 millimeter and we can make that surface and this whole size diameter of hole for the 5 m 5 bolt is usually 5.2 to 5.5 this drill is available of that size and you can make the hole so that easily you can put the bolt through there. So, this means that if we look into this here there will be one bolt one nut and two spring washer one at the top and one at the bottom but sometimes we can use one side plain washer other side spring washer but better to put with the spring washer so that it will not easily open due to the vibration okay so that is done and as you also look into this there are bigger holes say here if you look the side this this housing portion for bearing it is a uh, you can imagine this we have taken this gearbox of 7 millimeter wall thickness but here for this housing this wall thickness has been increased this is say 15 20 millimeter thickness like a rim sort of things that is touching the gearbox touching the main housing and then for this bolt holes very close to bearing so that bearing uh, because bearing there is a uh, load so we use higher size bolts near the bearing and for that you need a it is somewhat barrel shaped ridge portion is there and then we make the drill hole there. In this case probably we have to use 100 millimeter bolt and diameter we have taken 10 millimeter M 10 bolt the 5 millimeter for this locking and here this dimension we have kept about 30, 40 or 50 millimeter this from this to this here perhaps it is more 60 millimeter or so and we have made several holes, but near the bearing we have put the larger bolts okay. as you see here. Now, if I uh, in this view what we have done I have shown the elevation not fully bottom portions just to show you that this covers we have 6 bolt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bolt this is also we have taken M 5. Now, here this bolt is simply tighten on the bearing seat there will be tap hole and if we look into this view here say here this is these are the six holes for tightening the cover m5 bolt and thread is ma made inside this uh, housing raised portions where the bearing are setting now if we look this view apparently this bolt hole and the hole here they are um, interfering, but it is not that this is just to show this view of this bolt one detail view is shown here if you, you can enlarge you can see it there and as you see these are not fouling with these walls these are made at the 30 degree from the meeting point of the 
upper and lower casing from that line 30 degree and totally angle between these are 60 degree to put 6 volt, 6 bolts. But if you come to the um, input shaft perhaps we do not need 6 bolts there we can use uh, 4 bolts at 45 degree, but by no means they are not um, going inside the bolt here. So, they will not foul you can we can easily put the bolt here for tightening larger bolts we can put it here. So, if you look there this hole by the side of this main large holes. So, absolutely there should not have any problem and we have developed fully that what are the essential fixing uh, bolts and etcetera that are that are shown here. Now, next um, the whole gearbox when they are assembled we, we need to lift those ok. Then uh, for lifting there should have it, it is this is a cast body. So, we have made casting and this this in casting body we have kept a some some groove. So, that we can put some rope there this side one rope and other side another rope and then rope will make a loop here like this and then by hook at this point. or we can put usually there will be two hooks and then whole thing can be lifted there. So, this is for lifting purpose, but as well this this also stiffen the bottom housing. The wall size is only 7 millimeter. So, we need to put some stiffener. If you look into this stiffener in the side view, these are uh, widen and, and this is the central line make maybe this due to that one line will come over here, one line will come here and as, a, as I told that rope can be put like this and then this is used for lifting ok. So, this is also not only for lifting purpose, but, but also stiffen the housing as you see here. Okay. But apart from that we also use some stiffener here, these are all typically 7 millimeter thick and uh, between this raised portion here and between the bottom portion uh, of the housing that I will show in the next part. These ribs say if you if you look from this side it will be around 25 millimeter wide 7 millimeter thick and height will be from this to bottom that will also it is it's some, it some it will look like a fins and also this is having another purpose the purpose is that we are increasing the surface of the gearbox putting this stiffener this is stiffening the body of the housing as well as the surface is also increased. So, that it can dissipate the heat easily because these gearbox are not normally in many cases it is not no cooling arrangement is there separate cooling arrangement is there. So, and uh, as well we can put some stiffener here also we will put that stiffener it is not shown here, but as you find here is something is there this is called inspection hole. Through this inspection hole we can remove this cover top cover and we can in inspect of course, we shall keep into keep in mind that while the gearbox is running we should not open this one only this can be open when it is not running and through this we can see inside with some light source 
we can see inside whether these are intact. These are occasionally open and seen. So, that is for ins inspection. And uh, what is not yet developed, it will be maybe in the next drawing, it will be shown. Here we need to put a oil filling either here or at the bottom also we can put a oil filling. So, that we can part the oil inside usually you can you can say that at least the larger uh, large largest gear that will touch the oil at the bottom. This will be filled maybe depending on the size of the gear box maybe 5, 6 liter of oil or even more and the label is such that the bottom gear would always touch that one and when this gear will rotate then automatically oil will come over here it will lubricate the pinion and due to the splashing all components will be lubricated this is called splash lubrications that is very common in gearbox as well as there is uh, it is not in this view in other view i will show you uh, so, everything are discussed here, if something omitted you can ask me later I can give the answer or else in the next lecture I shall discuss. Now, in this side view I have shown details here for, so as this is for lifting as I mentioned and uh, this is for um, oil powering. Here will be, so this is for lifting, this is for, it is not a developed oil powering and uh, here there will be a eye bolt sort of things, here also it will be there. So, this is just to lift the upper cover only keeping everything intact we can lift the upper cover. So, these eye bolts are provided there okay, that will be there, but we should check also the oil level. So, that is why we need to put a oil gauge here and this time to time we can open it and we can see the what is the level of oil and usually as you can see this oil it can be put it like this. It may be both the gear are touching the oil. This will be emerging the oil and this is touching the oil. So, that proper lubrication is done. So, this is inspection hole and these are stiffener. This side also has a stiffener and here importantly here is a drain hole drain plug is not given drain hole if we would like to drain out the oil then we can drain it out and lastly i need to show that these three this side and three in other sides that means this side three and this side three that is for foundation that is foundation bolt we can on the ground or maybe on the structure, we can fix this gearbox with bolt. Now, interestingly, the bottom of this gearbox that is slightly above this surface, which are machined. Okay. For this small size gearbox, we can Im imagine that it is about uh, say 5 inches wide and may be a totally 10 inch long this portion. So, this is a thicker portion of the casting that are made at three places here, here and here and this bottom is machined so that it can set it properly, but housing is ending here that means oil level will be above this point this is 7 millimeter and this is not touching the ground. However, we can make this on this this three that additional thick portion what we can make we can make slightly here it can be made like this 
optional. So, only from this portion to this portion and this portion to this portion at 6 places that will be machined. And this hole is 12 millimeter as you find at this top of that some raised portion is on casting is kept and that also by using a special cutter we can make that surface machined. So, that the bolt and washer that can be put there and it can be properly tightened. Okay. And um, I think this all about this gearbox here I have shown that how this fixing is done. We have not shown this bolt here, but usually bolts are put from the bottom side and nut is put from the top for tightening purpose. So, that means here if I consider this portion there will be also a bolt like this and here there will be knot and this is the end of the bolts a bolt from the bottom and then it will be put. If we measure this it is about uh, 100 millimeter to 112 millimeter bolt. Okay. It is only threaded at the top portions other uh, portions are uh, solid not threaded. Here also up to this portion it is not threaded only upper portion is threaded we can put it there. Whereas, this bolt what we put here it is fully threaded because this thickness of this calf this cover is very thin. And uh, I think I have discussed everything if I missed anything that you can ask and I can answer to that. We will put some more stiffener maybe uh, the available nodes it will be there. This is the input shaft, this is the output shaft we can put in other way also this can be put in other way um, this side input other side input the simply the shaft can be put in the opposite directions as you see this intermediate shaft that can be put also in the opposite side. So, this design uh, has been made like this. So, this is the end of this lecture and um, next lecture I shall show you detail detailing of some components before that I will uh, mention how to number the components. Although drawing may not be fully complete, but uh, which is called bill of materials we will make few items identify we will give the number there and we will show that how they are put in the bill of materials and uh, then we will have a general discussion on the design of this gearbox that is the concluding part or their repetitions that how actually we have developed this gearbox. Thank you once again.